Hey everyone, I uh, just want to make a video basically of how an amplifier works, a uh, car audio amplifier works. Now there's a lot of information out there about how individual components in the amplifier works or real basic information about how an amplifier works, you know, signal comes in, it gets amplified, it gets sent back out. Uh, but I couldn't really find anything that really showed what's going on inside the amp when it's working. So just want to kind of go over that a little bit. I'm not going to go into real great detail, but I'm just going to kind of give the, the basic how everything kind of flows through the amplifier. So this is a cheap Boss amplifier, and I'm using this one because it's a pretty simple layout. And most amplifiers are laid out just like this. There just might be a lot more components in them um, because they're more powerful. There might be a lot more... Um, crossover network stuff, uh, a lot more uh, filtering, uh, just a lot more stuff, but it's all basically the same thing. So I just want to kind of go over this. Now you will notice on this one, this is where all the power supply FETs would normally be. Um, those are all removed right now. I'm actually repairing this amplifier. So those have been removed for now. I'm just waiting for the new ones to get here. So I figured I'd wait while I'm waiting I'd make this video. Well, first thing we'll talk about is the heart of any amplifier, really, um, except some really old ones. This, this is the pulse width modulator. Now this is what runs the power supply. Basically what this does is switches on and off very, very, very quickly, usually between uh, like 20,000 and 50,000 hertz. So that's 50,000 times a second that this can switch on and off. So what that does is it drives the uh, power supply transistors. Now these are almost always MOSFETs now. So any modern amplifier will usually use MOSFETs. So let's kind of start at the beginning. So here's your power terminals. Okay, You have your main power in, remote turn on, and ground. Okay. The main power in is going to come in through the amplifier. It's going to go through these filtering capacitors. This will kind of store some energy as well as filter out some high frequency noise from your alternator or something else in the system. Um, this is another filter. All right, this is a choke. This is also going to filter out high frequency noise. So now you have some power stored in this area here. Okay, it's not doing anything yet. This little diode right here, I'll go over this too. This is a reverse polarity protection. What this does basically is if you happen to connect the power and ground reversed on the amplifier, this diode will let current pass. Normally it blocks current. When it lets current pass, it basically makes a dead short. What that'll do is hopefully before anything else gets damaged, it will blow the main fuse. Okay. That doesn't always happen. Um, a lot of times it will it will destroy the amplifier, but it is there just in case. So okay, so now we've got power stored here. Now the power is going to be um, usually on the center leg of each one of these transistors here, the MOSFETs, but they're not doing anything yet. So what's going to happen is this chip here. I went over this earlier. This is going to switch these on extremely fast, on and off, on and off. So what that's going to do is send power from the power supply, from the main power through the transistors and into this coil right here. This is the transformer. Okay. When this gets switched on extremely fast, it's going to induce a voltage, a higher voltage, into the secondary windings, which is the smaller windings in here. Okay, so it's going to go from the main windings on and off extremely fast and get come out of the secondary windings, uh, but at a higher voltage. Okay, once it leaves this transformer at a higher voltage, it's also going to be AC voltage now, not DC like what's coming in through the main power. Um, so what's going to happen is it's going to go through this set of rectifiers right here. Okay, what these rectifiers do, these are basically two diodes inside each one. Positive voltage and negative voltage are, can only pass through these one direction. Okay, So what's going to happen is this is going to create your rail voltage, which is 
basically what is used to drive your speakers. So you're going to have a positive rail voltage and a negative rail voltage. So uh, that can vary a lot. It's usually, I mean for a lot of amplifiers, you could have negative 20 volts and positive 20 volts. So it would be like a 40 volt swing all the way up to you know hundreds of volts on the rails. Which is why you have to be very careful, careful if you're in an amplifier um, when it's powered up because there actually can be enough voltage on the rails to kill you. Okay, So once they leave the rectifiers they're gonna go into these capacitors here. These are also filtering capacitors. So these will filter out noise again and it will also store a small charge um, for the output section. Okay, Now these are the output transistors here there's a set on this amplifier, there's a set for the negative rails or the negative side of the channel and there's a set for the positive side of the channel. Okay, So now you have rail voltage coming to these transistors and now it can't go anywhere again. Just like when it got to the MOSFETs, there's nothing telling these to turn on. So what that is, what tells those is this is your signal coming in from your RCAs. Okay, This is a signal coming from the head unit. So this is going to go through here, it's going to go through this input stage which basically gives you your gain, frequency, all kinds of filters, low pass, high pass switches um, right here. So it goes through all those and then it's going to go into what's called an op amp. So now what's going to happen from there is it's going to go from the op amps usually through a set of driver transistors because those don't have enough power to actually turn these on and off the output transistors. It's going to it's going to go through these set of driver transistors right here. Okay? These are the driver transistors right here. These are taking the signal from the op amps and turning the output transistors on and off. Now, the signal that turns these on and off, it's not a set signal like the power supply is. Okay? It's not just 20,000 hertz. It's going to resemble basically the signal that's coming into the RCAs. Okay. Now, another kind of another kind of system that's going to happen here at the same time is a small signal from the signal coming into this is going to go back into the op amps. Okay, that's an, a feedback circuit. What that does is if the signal that's coming off these doesn't match the signal that's coming in, it will try to correct that. Um, just gets rid of more noise, okay? There's a lot of parts in this amplifier, or in any amplifier, that are just specifically to try to get rid of noise. So the signal coming in is exactly what's going out, just not as powerful, okay? So now these are going to turn on and off. It's going to take the rail voltage, okay, that was stored in these caps here on the rails. Uh, they call them rails, and now you actually won't see any rails in this amplifier, but that's just basically the output section's power supply. Okay, it's going to go through these transistors and right out to the speakers. Okay, so that's basically how an amplifier works. Power coming in, the PWM, the pulse width modulator, switches on the MOSFETs extremely fast. That creates pulse DC in the transformer. That DC is transformed to a higher voltage. That's also that's now AC. That goes through a set of rectifiers. That turns the, the voltage back to DC. The DC current is switched on and off by the signal coming in through the op amps, through the driver transistors, to the output transistors, and out to the speakers. So that's just a real basic overview of how this amplifier works.